Red Rose Radio, Saturday afternoon. I want to turn our attentions now to a gentleman of sport, or should I say a retired gentleman of sport. He actually started his sporting career uh, playing football for Halifax Town, but never quite made the first team uh, and gave up gracefully, took on refereeing and became a very successful referee, retired just before the Premier League started. But that's when this story starts, because he took uh, pen to paper and started writing. Initially... It was articles about the music scene in Halifax, and then it got a little bit more serious. Let's say a very warm welcome to my guest, Trevor Simpson. Thank you for joining us, Trevor. Oh, it's a pleasure to see you. Hey, what an introduction. I I think I ought to go now before I say anything else. (laughs) Well, well, you're on a high. (laughs) Yeah, that's right, yeah. (laughs) So, tell us the story. I mean, first of all, you were an Elvis Presley fan, weren't you? Well, I bought Heartbreak Hotel when it came out in 1956, and uh, it was on an old 78 that my dad let me play it on his radiogram yeah. um, before I had a record player of my own. And, uh, I, yeah, I got hooked on the new music. Um, you know, remember growing up in the sort of uh, 50s, um, there wasn't really any pop music. It was all sort of uh, after the war dance bands and yeah. sort of vocal groups. And when Elvis came along, well, he shook the whole thing up and it, we got a new music, especially for teenagers. Oh, and what made you put pen to paper then? Well, I, I retired, um, uh, you, you know, you've you mentioned that from refereeing. Um, I was 48. You had to retire at 48 as a referee. Right. But I managed to sort of get a bit of an extension to my career as a referee coach. Um, working with referees and trying to develop them. In fact, Howard Webb, who went on to do the World Cup final, uh, was one of my protégés uh, when he got on the Football League for a start. So I was doing a little bit there, but I managed to get out of the day job when I was 55. Uh, and I had this idea of uh, researching uh, all the things that were influential to me in my youth, or, which was mainly music and football. Yeah. Um, I was still involved with football, but I went into the library uh, in Halifax and researched every artist who ever came and performed in Halifax from 1956, when Rock Around the Clock, the film came, right through to the end of the 1960s. So mm. I wrote those two books. It took about a couple, three years to write, um, and they sold out, and I gave all the money to charity. So it was a bit of a foretaste of what was to come. Yeah. But it served me in good stead, Steve, because... Uh, went on to write four books uh, initially about Elvis, finished up writing five books about him, and um, th- those were a delight to do. But you did, you did most of those books at the request of Graceland's, didn't you? How did that happen? Well, I, I was writing for a magazine called Essential Elvis in the UK, uh, and uh, the editor of that magazine was well-connected in Memphis with uh, quite a lot of people, Um, And he he used to go over there every year. And one particular year when he went over, um, his wife was pregnant and the baby was due on the anniversary uh, when he should have been in uh, in Memphis. So he said, Trev, I've got 50 people on a bus um, and I can't go and run the tour. Can you go to Memphis and run the tour for me? So I jumped on this bus and sort of uh, pointed out all the sites all around Memphis went to Graceland, obviously, um, and met a guy there who uh, was connected through a company called Follow That Dream in Scandinavia. They were doing all the CDs and collector stuff for Elvis fans, and he said, oh, I've seen your articles in the magazine. Uh, Would you write a book through the official channels of Follow That Dream? So I said, well, yeah, what, what shall we... Well, he said, what do you know about? I said... I'm really into all the music. I don't care about him eating hamburgers or whatever <laughs> pills he took or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, it's the music. Fantastic, he said. That's exactly what I'm wanting. Uh, and that's how he started, Steve. Wow. We're talking now about the time when he wrote books for Elvis Presley for Graceland and the opportunity he had of meeting uh, Priscilla. Tre- uh, Trevor, tell us a story about how that actually happened. Well, it happened through the books. Um uh, I, I mean, just getting back to the football, um, you know, it was before the Premier League and I was lucky enough to referee every team in the Football League 
with the exception of West Ham United. Oh, they wow. were the ones who escaped. That's by the by. Let's get back to Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, well, uh, I, I started researching this book, and it was called Elvis, the Best of British. Uh, it was written about every song that was released, every record that we re- was released, uh, in Great Britain in the year from 1956 to 1958. Um, so it was just a two-year time span, but it, it was the book weighed five pounds in weight. Uh, it had 400 pages, and they produced it so well, Steve, with all the illustrations, the um, the pictures of Elvis from the era. Yeah. And Priscilla Presley saw it on sale at Graceland. And... She got in touch with the magazine editor, who, who she she and he were friends already, and she said, oh, look, I'm coming to the UK. Um, can we meet up? Can you bring Trevor along to meet me? And, I said, and he said, yeah, that will be no problem. And she was in a pantomime in Manchester. Really? Um, yeah, in Snow White and the Seven Walls. And um, she, she was staying uh, at the Lowry Hotel in Manchester, and... I went along with my wife and this other chap and a couple of other friends, uh, and we met her in a hotel. Uh, we went to see her in the panto. Oh, yes, we did. <laughs> oh, no, you didn't. Uh, and and it, was, uh, it was fantastic. After the panto was over, we went back to a hotel uh, and again had uh, uh, some food with her. And it, it was just, she was such a charming likeable lady. You could see why I was fell in love with her, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, and when she went back to America, my, my other books started to come out then, and they were on sale in Graceland. Uh, well, they're all sold out. Um, they, they've all gone now, but I wrote two group books, uh, two of the books about gospel music, Elvis's gospel music, and Priscilla said that had he been alive, that's probably what he would have been. He would have carried on and been a gospel singer rather than just a pop singer. Really? So that wow. was an interesting side to it. Yeah, definitely. So how many books did you write in total on Elvis, on Elvis then? Well, there were five altogether. Um, the, the first one covered the years 56 to 58, and then the second one was 58 to 60, and then 60 to 62, and then three gospel books, where I researched every gospel song that Elvis ever sang, um, 